Hi, I'm Chuck Berman, and right now what I'd like to do is show you how to take these three images and stitch them together into one continuous panorama within Photoshop Elements 9. Now you can see these images are raw images. They all have a .crw name. They're shot with a Canon camera, and they have already been loaded into the organizer. The organizer is what we're in right now. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you these pictures a little bit larger and I'm going to go up here to the slideshow mode. Let's close these windows over here like that. And you can see that I've got three images and there's a little bit of overlap in each one of these images. For instance, see this building here? I can see that same building over here. Now I've got maybe too much overlap in these images, but that's okay. You just need to have enough overlap so that pieces like this building would be recognizable by the software so that it can find parts that need to be put together on and uh, seamlessly integrated. Okay, so let's uh, close this, go back down here to our organizer, and I'm going to open these images. Now, they are raw images, so when I open them, they're going to open in camera raw. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Command or Control A to select all of the images. Now I've got a couple options here. One is I could go under the Fix menu to Guided Photo Edit, and there will be some automatic steps that would take me through the process. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go in and do a full photo edit because it gives me a little more flexibility. So we'll click on full photo edit and you'll see that in a moment everything opens in camera raw. Now the first thing, the absolute first thing that I do when I get into camera raw here is I want to come over and select all right there. The reason I do that is so that when I make any change, such as exposure, that change is immediately reflected identically in all the images. So let's double click on that and get that back down to normal. Now before I go in and start adjusting anything here, I'm going to go over to the third tab, the one with the little camera on it, the camera calibration. And it ena enables me to put in a camera profile. Now what a camera profile looks like is, well, you know when you set your camera up, you have a choice as to whether you want to have uh, a standard image or a portrait image or a uh, image for landscape. Well, those have been simulated within Camera Raw. When you set it in your camera, what it does is it only affects the JPEG images. The RAWs are not affected. So what Adobe has done for us is they've come in and said, okay, well, if you want to use the camera landscape and pump up the blues in the sky and pump up the greens in the foliage, we'll do that for you. So this is like a preset that is being used. Now I'm going to go back to the first tab, to my basic tab, and one of the things that I notice here is that right around the top of the mountain, I've got these little red marks. Well, what are those little red marks? What the red marks are, and let me increase my exposure a little bit and show you. Since I've got my highlight clipping warning turned on, and I would suggest that you do that, that's the little triangle in the upper right hand corner of your histogram here. You can tell it's on because you have a little white line around it. What that tells you is in these areas out here, there are some pixels that are blown out. They've just gone too far, and you may not be able to reproduce this. Well, how do you get rid of it? One way is, of course, by reducing your exposure down. But what I want to do here is I want to have my exposure a little lighter here so that I can have more detail in my image, but I've still got this mess going on out here. Well, there's a slider here called Recovery that I can take that out and minimize that uh, overexposure with. I can do this easily because I'm working with a raw image. If I were working with a JPEG, I might not be able to fix this. Okay, 
So what I'm going to do now is I want to get a little more pop into this image. So I'm going to increase my blacks. And you can see that it's being affected on all of the image. I'm going to increase my clarity a little bit, which will make things a little bit sharper. And I'm going to bring up the vibrance, which will make that sky a little deeper. And you can see it's going through and fixing everything here. All right. Um, let me see. Do I want to increase the brightness on it? Maybe not. There we go. Bring the brightness down to about like that. Okay. Remember, you do this to where it looks good. Now, one of the things that's happening here is I'm getting some really deep blue showing up around in here. That's because I have my shadow clipping on. I can get rid of that by introducing some fill light. It's just like when you take a picture and add a flash in. It just brings the exposure up just in the shadows. So now I've got all three of my images and all I do now is click Open Images. And in just a few moments all three images will open inside of Photoshop Elements 9. Now each image is up in here. You can click on the tabs and see all the images and down here where it says show open files in the project bin you can see all of your images here. Well I want to merge these images together to make one wide panorama. So I'm selecting one image by clicking on it. You can see it's selected because it has a blue line. I'm going to hold my shift key down and click on the one on the other end. Okay, now I'm going to merge these three images together. And of course, if I had five or seven images out here, I would do the same thing with that. You just select the ones that you want to merge together, and then you go up to the File menu, and under New, you see Give Me a New Photo Merge Panorama. And I click it. The Photo Merge dialog box opens up and it says that there's a lot of different types of panoramas that I can uh, work with in here. I choose right now to use automatic. As far as the files, it has to know which files to use and I'm just going to say open or use the files that are already open and those files are automatically picked. I could have just come in here and just said okay browse which would send me out to my computer to find some images to bring in. I could have done that also, but this is the way that I'm working on it. And I'm going to go down here to the bottom, and I definitely want to blend the images together. And usually a lens has got a little vignetting. What that means is that the edges of the lens may be darker than the middle. And by clicking on Vignette Removal, all of that's automatically taken care of. Geometric distortion is the same thing. If I'm using a wide-angle lens, there could be some distortion in that lens, and this will take it out. And actually, the way it does is it goes in, and depending on which lens you use, the metadata that's associated with the image will tell the program which lens you have, so it'll know exactly how to correct it. Now I'm just going to click on OK, and we've started our process and we are creating our panorama based on these three images. And you can see over here in the upper right here, these are our three images. They're coming in as uh, three separate layers. And now everything is being aligned and uh, it's removing the vignetting. And when it finishes doing that, it'll go in and it'll create long layers. See how this is right here? Now it's still working. It hasn't finished yet because now it has to mask the edges of these images so that you can see here how the program chooses the parts of the images that are going to be used. And you can see that I've got quite a bit of overlap in these images here. Okay, this is our panorama. But the edges of the panorama are a little bit rough. This is due to the, uh, the distortion of the lenses. It, it, uh, there's a lot of things that take into play here. If the camera is not level, you may get uh, some really strange things going on. In the past, what we've had to do at this point is just go in and crop the image and just get rid of everything up here and everything down here. Now, if you get rid of the sky, maybe that's not so bad. But when you start getting rid of the ground, if I were to crop this, I would lose all the stuff in the lower central part of the image. 
Well, why am I telling you this? Because there's a dialog box that just popped up that said clean edges. Would you like to automatically fill in the edges of the panorama? It'll fill in the sky and it'll do a pretty good job of filling in the ground. So I'm going to say yes. But before I do click yes, I want you to notice this. There's a little button here that says always perform this action. I am not going to click on that. And the reason I'm not going to click on that is because there may be some instances where I don't always want to do this. In other words, I may want to crop it. Okay, so let's click yes. And in just a few moments, we'll see that Photoshop Elements has gone in and has not only filled in the sky, but it's also created some ground here that appears almost seamless. Let's see what happens. We're almost done. There it is. It did a very good job. And we're almost finished now, but there's a couple things we do want to do. Uh, you can see here that this image, let's go in here and let's just look here at the document size. We can see this image is about 90 megabytes. Well, I can reduce that down quite a bit because I don't need all these other layers in here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this little flyout on the Layers panel. I'm going to click that and come down and just say Merge Visible. So it'll take all my visible layers and put them together. Now I can go in and if I need to do some other adjustments or other modifications, I can very easily do that.